Hello everyone, I'm going to be making this tutorial um, to explain uh, how to use SignalR um, in uh, .NET Framework, .NET Core and uh, Angular application as frontend. So to kind of explain how SignalR works, I have this simple image here. Um, so SignalR has a class called Hub and uh, this is basically where all the communication center is. Um, if you create your application, uh, um, each one of these clients as front end can communicate to the hub back and forth and also from the hub to the other users. Um, usually the way the quickest way to talk in the way like the way SignalR is made to communicate is from one client to all other clients or from one client to a group of clients, for example, these two guys. Um, however, if you make this comp uh, more persistent and uh, add like a database, then uh, you can uh, assign certain IDs to each one of these clients and then you can communicate back and forth and in all directions. But today we're going to keep it simple and just show how to communicate to SignalR and uh, to, hub, to the hub from one client to the hub and back. Um, so yeah, let's show the next step would be inside of your C sharp project, uh, which is uh, just a simple ASP.NET Core Web application. So once you open this, so once you open this, uh, you can select the web API, and that would open you this solution explorer right here then what we're gonna do we're gonna add a file or you can just add a class but I like to separate everything but and folders so we call this hub config and inside of there we can create class called my hub So inside of my hub, we're gonna inherit the hub class, and uh, that's gonna be from uh, the NuGet package that you will install from Microsoft ASP.NET Core SignalR. So from here, um, you would import using SignalR and once you do that uh, then you would have to change it to launch settings uh, erase the IES guy and change this to false we're going to be communicating to the local host 5001. So once you save that, you can exit this one. And uh, in the startup to have no errors with the course and policies, we're going to be adding some extra pieces of code. So we're going to say uh, first off um, using, using hub config and then instead of here, we would say add course and policy allow headers and then in the builder we're gonna say to allow any origin any header any method we're gonna add signal R enable all the detailed errors and add controllers so all these this has added those are the one I just pasted and uh, inside of a configure we're gonna add these two guys. Um, we are going to apply our policy that we created up here and uh, we're going to map my hub class and provide a point to talk to the endpoint. Okay, so 
once that's done um, inside of our hub we can create a simple function that would be something like it would be a task it's called task server and it will accept a string and then we let it have some other string here and say if the string that we passed is hey we would prompt uh, that the message was hey if it's something else then we said the message is something else and then we're gonna talk to the client and uh, this is uh, how you talk to the listener which I'm gonna show later and um, we're gonna pass the string basically saying message was hey or message was something else that's it as far as the as far as the backend goes so now to the front end side um, we have a basic application of an uh, app and um, inside of app we would have a single R service which is currently just a blank service so inside of there we would first need to install signal R to do that we're gonna need this command npm install ASP um, next thing would be to import so we import signal R um, import all the signal R from ASP signal R then the next thing would be to actually have a connection variable and a function that would start the connection so we do hub connection new signal on connection builder with a URL from whatever our server is and the endpoint we provided which in this case is toaster so the reason I have it as toaster is because in the future videos I'm gonna be using toaster to demonstrate some work so toaster matches here and here so we're using also a skip negotiation to true and uh, web sockets uh, this is necessary in this case to avoid uh, the course issues so you can also mess around with these guys here if you don't want to use the web sockets but this, this is what makes a signal art so fast and uh, efficient so once we build the connection uh, then we have an option to uh, start it and uh, then in the then function you can provide whatever the functionality you want so in this case I'm just console log uh, how connection started just to let the user know connection has started right uh, then uh, we can also catch the error in case uh, there's some error and provide the error message so once all that's here uh, then we can uh, in engine it we can uh, uh, call our start connection and uh, this will take maybe a split second we're talking about milliseconds microseconds to start uh, once you have that I still put a set timeout here uh, just in case uh, it doesn't give me error so uh, I'm waiting two seconds basically giving this time to start and then calling the methods um, I'm gonna implement these methods soon but so the best way to do this is actually to instead of set timeout to have a rxjs interval or some observable they would uh, keep checking and once the start connection has started and hub connection is established then you would call these two functions but in this case for the sake of the video I will just keep it simple and I uh, use this so once we have that then uh, we can also implement these two functions um, so we have as server as server is going to invoke a function onto the server called ask server and then it would pass an arg uh, string as an argument and it would be k and uh, we would catch any errors if they appear so what this does is actually uh, there's three important uh, methods to consider about hub connection is uh, invoke on and uh, off off is usually used uh, to 
unsubscribe so in this case uh, pop will be used as on destroy or for any application and then on g ng on destroy we can see this dot signal service dot hub connection off and whatever our listener is so to explain this invoke invokes a function of their server in this case s server it would uh, come to the hub find the function s server do whatever the logic and then it would say okay we're all done now we'd like to talk back to the client and find this listener of the client s server response so then we go to the uh, server response and this is where this listener comes in handy so you're on the server response so every time you have a uh, this line right here it would uh, tell the client with uh, this connection id and i'll come back to this later um, send the same find this function and pass the string so that means you would get here and it would pass the string and uh, you can use delegate to provide some functionality and all I'm going to do is just console log the string so <clears throat> what we are expecting is actually to see the text from this string which is message was here or message was something else so uh, you can also use uh, client clients and then provide other connection IDs uh, of the users you want to send and they will be comma separately or you can just send it to the one connection id which is your current connection id as you visit the hub so this uh, connection id in this case from the image is imagine that i'm the client right right here as i talk to the hub i get a unique connection id that signal r generates and uh, that's the connection id that i'm going to be using this whole time and the way that I'm going to communicate between the hub and the client um, until we close the application or refresh the browser or similar so once I say clients client talk to this connection ID that means me in this case ask server response find that find that listener and pass this function so we are finding this listener passing the function and prompting other stuff. And uh, that's it. Inside of here, we start the connection, we call those two functions, and then on destroy, which in this case is not necessary because we're in the app component. So if you close the app, it will destroy it anyway. But to demonstrate, we would uh, refresh. It says hub connection started, and message was hey is correct that's what we expect if we change this to high and we see it refreshes hub connection started message was something else and uh, yeah there's uh, some extra stuff to this so if you want to say hi to multiple people you can uh, do that in this fashion but each one of these would have to be as a separate, as a different connection ID to whatever user you want to send. So in this case, I can do client because this is only one client that I'm sending to. Or I can actually get rid of this and just do all. And I will send it to currently all active users to the hub. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, uh, please ask me down in the comments. And uh, I hope this helped. Have a good day. Thank you.